All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. Um, I don't know why it's playing that again in the background. Oh, I know what's going on. I'm hearing it from somewhere else. Ignore me. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. My name is Christopher Harrison, and this is Web Wednesday, the show where we bring on some really cool people to talk about all things uh, web development. And today I'm really pleased to be joined by Tomomi Imura, uh, who is here to talk about uh, internationalization, and in particular around working with uh, dates inside of JavaScript, uh, that I think all of us as developers uh, have experienced at some point the pain that is dealing with dates, the pain that is dealing certainly with uh, international dates. Um, everybody has their own opinion on how dates should be formatted. There are some that are insistent that it should always be year, month, day, or you know whatever it is. Um, but trying to, to manage that and, and uh, handle that with internationalization can certainly be a challenge. And so Tamami is here to talk about that and uh, uh, potentially some other things about like drawings and otherwise. But Enough about like me babbling here. Let's go ahead and bring Tomomi on. So Tomomi, thank you so awesome. much for, for joining. Hey. Yeah, thank you for having me. So I always like to start the show with the basic question of how did you become uh, Tomomi? How did you become you know what you are today? How did you get into how did you get into tech? Okay, that would be a long story. I'm gonna do that <laughs> a whole hour if I took him up. <laughs> but long story short, yeah. Yeah, let's but... let's let's go with that version. Yeah, that's like the five minute version. So I didn't start it out as an engineer because I studied biology at college. So I was actually doing research, you know, the microbiology research for a while. But that time, yeah, I was actually managing the team web pages, and you know, I kind of started thinking that is more fun, and the rumor has it that paid better. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not all about paying. Actually, back in the time, of course, and you know, all about you know, all I think about is what you know. I wanted to do something I love to do, and you know, and it's just one time the realization comes. I really like you know developing a web, so. I switched my career, and that was a long time ago, actually. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how much in the detail I should talk about. Maybe not much, but uh, but basically, I was actually a mobile geek as well. So I always loved mobile phones. So I was actually working web and a mobile for a long time, and even like prehist yeah prehistoric era, like before iPhone, I was working on a mobile web. <laughs> that was the time I was in a Yahoo mobile. And uh, actually, I did a work uh, on iPhone before it came out. So I think I was the one of the first, you know, people that who was working on iPhone outside of Apple. So I had a whole spec, all redacted specs from Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Fun time, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I worked on uh, Windows Phone as well. Yeah. Um, and web OS and all the dead phone, dead mobile OSs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I miss I miss Windows Phone. I I I will still insist to this very day that that mm -hmm. that Windows Phone OS was by far the best mobile OS we've ever seen. Yeah, it was a nice design. I really like that. Yeah. 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 I'm Obviously, there wasn't a whole lot of apps for it, but that 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 design. I mean, it just it felt so natural, and especially just like looking at an iPhone or an Android um, today, like it it really it it hasn't changed um, a whole lot since since back then, at least as far as like the the OS goes. Like, yeah, sure, there's you know better security, and there, mm -hmm. the the camera's gotten better, and all of that. Like, all of those features are are important. Don't get me wrong, but like the the actual interface really hasn't changed all that much at all. Uh -huh. Yeah, that I have a lot to talk about because <laughs> of course <laughs> that's not today's topic, but yeah, because before Windows Phone, I was actually an engineer for the web OS. Mm. And uh, yeah, I say engineers, but I was actually in the UX team. So did a lot, yeah, the user interface. And now I see a lot, you know, iPhones and Android, it's kind of, you know, inherited the stuff we have created back in the time. It was a long time ago so yeah so at that time you know iphone didn't even have uh, notifications and stuff but we did it so that's kind of cool to still see things we did like 10 years ago so mm -hmm. yeah um, i can dig that and so how did you find your way over to microsoft 
Yeah, so it's funny because I just joined, not, I wouldn't say just joined, but I just, <laughs> I joined last year. So I've been here only for a little bit over a year, but it's because I worked uh, on, you know, Windows Phone. A lot of people think I came back to Microsoft, but it's actually not true. Yeah, it's the first time working here because I was in Nokia and Microsoft have acquired Nokia's mobile division. And I was supposed to come to Microsoft that time, but I was actually transferred to the R&D team. So I stayed with Nokia. Yeah, so this is actually the first time I joined. And um, actually I joined an M365 team. And so the, basically that's uh, the Microsoft modern work that includes something like you know Microsoft Teams. So I'm usually working with Teams team and Graph team, you know, other teams to support, you know, a developer experience there. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So then you probably work with uh, Beth Pan, I'm guessing. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's I, I, a friend of mine. I, I know that she works on on the on the Graph toolkit. So. Ooh, yeah. 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 And so, do you prefer then doing mobile development or prefer doing web development? Like, where's your happy space? Uh -huh. Mobile, forget it. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> uh, like again, I'm a web person, so my passion always goes with web. And I even, you know, worked with W3C in the past. Yeah, that time I was working mm. for like mobile web, but now you know the web, mobile web. I mean, the web browsers on mobile phones really, you know, advanced. So we don't really need to separate all mobile or desktop and all those. Maybe we still talk about like real estate, like size and stuff. But you know, we don't really have to separate anymore. So I kind of stopped working on a mobile web. And sometimes in my life, like in a career, I stopped doing all the web stuff and uh, you know, I join a startup to do some chat bot stuff. Maybe that's why I'm with Teams team now, but but it's still, you know, like a technology we're using every day. It's web technology. So that's you know something I still do. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. I uh, I, I did a fair bit of, of chatbot development <laughs> as well in, in the past. I really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed doing that. So but cool. So um, you're here to talk about uh, dates and international dates inside of JavaScript. So Basically, yeah. yeah, like let's let's sort of start here is is kind of like what's available in, in, in JavaScript? Where 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 can I get support? Like what challenges can I wind up running into? Challenge. Well, <laughs> so many challenges to be honest, but first of all, like date and time, you know, this is not just something okay. I have to really be honest about I'm not even an expert in the field. And date and time is something, you know, it's not like you use every day. Maybe when you're developing some apps or something, you might use that for like just getting timestamp as some unique idea or whatever, or maybe just calculate calculating time. But like again, usually you have to always look up look up and uh, references, which I'm going to show you in the Mozilla's like and then later too. But so uh, there's a lot of things like you tend to forget easily and not not just the specs and stuff. It's just the confusing date and time. We know uh, I live in the United States and uh, we tend to do things the US way, US format is a standard. Or maybe some people even call it de facto standard. But the thing is, oh, somebody says can't hear. Oh. But, um, I can hear you fine, so it huh. should be broadcasting okay. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Sorry, Lucas. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I'm, oh yeah, so yeah, and uh, we often think about like maybe American centric in some way. We believe we are like old standards, but the fact is it's not. And often confusing, like let's say American way of saying today's date is October six, but you know it's. So we tend to say 10, 6 and 2021, 20, mm -hmm. but obviously that's not really the international standards. So many times we have to care about this, but the reality is we don't really know and we don't care in many times, but obviously that's not. So now the ECMA you know, standards has a internationalization that we can use. Yeah, I didn't really answer the question, but- No, no, no you- <laughs> Yeah. No, you 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 did, and you also you know informed us. Uh, you know, you you informed all of us Americans that hey, there are countries outside of America. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
So that's something I will be talking about later too. But I was born and raised in Japan. I came to the U.S. and later in my life. So obviously, you know, it's not. I kind of have a way to think in both way, or maybe mm. maybe it's, it's a little different in a way. And I'm kind of frustrated many times when I'm working, at, you know, or talking with American, very American, like U.S. centric. I would say U.S. centric companies and stuff, especially not like large you know not every company is big and international like a global scale it could be like startups so people don't care don't know never care about localization internationalization and all those so i always have to you know being a bad person to tell them hey we have to take care you know care about the people outside of this country you know <laughs> it's always yeah i always gonna be in the position <laughs> just telling people about that yeah well, I'm I, I'm I'm saying that you have to always be in that position, but I'm glad that you are taking that position because it's definitely something we need to like all do a better job of. So, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's why I want to talk about this uh, ECMA script uh, for okay. two. Yeah. Then I I, I I will give you the floor. Why don't you why don't you talk a little bit about ECMA script and and how we can work with dates? Okay. All right. Let's begin them. So let me see. Okay, hold on a second. So I'm gonna share on my browser. Mm -mm. It's, oops, okay. There we go. Do you see? Oh, okay, cool, cool. There it is. All right, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not using like a slides or anything. I'm gonna just show you the web pages that is already written by a lot of people, not me. So the, basically, uh, yeah, what is like ECMAScript International API? You know, so that's the scripting language that forms the JavaScript based on. Well, I can say you know it's a JavaScript standards here. And uh, let me see. Hold on a second. Sorry, I have a lot of stuff going on here. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, what I use here is actual ECMAScript uh, specification here. So uh, this has, the, 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 so right now it's a 12th edition. We have so many things. So you've heard of something like, you know, when we say uh, ES6, ES7, or maybe like using AR, so ES2021 and all those. Uh, so that's all documented here, right here in ECMA 262. But there's another one that it's lesser known ECMA specification here as a 402, uh, which is uh, an internationalization API. So uh, the ECMA script here, yeah. So ECMA script internationalization API was originally introduced in, to, 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 oh, it's a 12, 2012, the first edition, but I think it's actually first introduced around 2010 and currently in the eighth edition. And uh, that's actually I've created to here uh, the kind of defined right here program that I need to adapt to the linguistic and cultural conventions used by different human languages and countries. That sounds fancy. But basically, uh, <laughs> that means that, you know, they're created to help localize the output of date numbers and currencies in JavaScript. So that uh, has been quite adapted um, well in a major browser. So I'm actually showing you, can I use the com and can I use Intel? Mm -hmm. And there's so many uh, objects and stuff here. What is, what is can I use com? This is actually really a wonderful uh, website that um, maintained by, it's not like by us or any uh, browser vendors, it's completely independent, so it's great. And it can check any, you know, the features and properties and such, you know, like functions and properties and all those the object and all those things in JavaScript that actually supported in browser. So I'm gonna talk about actually a date. Uh, oops. I'm not good at typing, so yeah. time <laughs> format. If you want to check the specific things, yeah, that's here. Above. So we can see it pretty oops, well adapted in Edge, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari has a TP, a technical preview, but it is actually there supported. I checked most, yeah, so it's great. OK. 
Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we have like let's say uh, for example, Intel object. It's a built-in that the built-in object has a uh, Intel the date time format like I'm showing right now. Okay. What is what and, is the Intel object? Well, I think I'm gonna cover it later. Okay. But basically, this is pretty much everything specified here and okay. internationalization. Yeah, so uh, other things we have is like a number format. So let's say number format. So that's, you know, when you travel in other countries and stuff, you kind of notice that currency is uh, spelled out, like written in a slightly different way. Like in the US, maybe when we talk about like 1000, like 1K, it's like 1 comma 000, but it's not always true when you put in other countries. Actually, I mentioned I used to work in Nokia, and uh, that was disastrous when I was, you know, doing uh, expense report because I have to do in their way. So I always put comma and period or flip to everything because uh, instead of comma, I have to use a dot. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ah, yes, and of course you have other things like a plural. Uh, oh yeah, over here plural rules API and things like that. So yeah, okay. so, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go over this. Well, actually today I'm only gonna talk about date and time, but I'm gonna talk about this a little bit uh, later because uh, I wanna actually, let me see, talk about the basics first, because basics are important. <laughs> Almost <laughs> like maybe you forgot or I forget. You know, it's great, it refresh my mind for me. So I am going to walk you through the basics first so that's like a date. So I'm just showing this MDN. It's by Mozilla. It's really some way I always use as references. And uh, so according to Mozilla, uh, JavaScript data object represent a single moment in time and a platform independent format. I'm going to just read this. Yeah, I'm actually reading this. So data object contains a number that represent milliseconds since uh, 1 January 1970 UTC. So I'm going to just uh, open up the inspector here. And yeah, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to just uh, use this. Um, oops. Which I'm really bad at typing. <laughs> so this is a um, the static method date that now that returns a number millisecond left since this date here, January so first milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So if I you know, try this again, of course you know you see a different number because you know you do the math. That's how many milliseconds have passed since I call this you know method. And uh, oh, yeah, I said January 1, January 1st, 1970, instead of 1 January, because like I said, I'm in the US and uh, <laughs> in the US, that's how we say, you know, this is really about a today's topic. Yeah. So, well, we can maybe just call the uh, constructor, called as a constructor. So let's say maybe just call it now. It's already here. Okay, I'm going to just click this and new date. And uh, yeah, so this is a, um, let me see, hold on. Actually, it's on the way because let's, so yeah, so now it's a Wednesday, October 6th, and it's 1220. Uh, it's my time and the Hawaii Illusion Standard Time. So that's my time zone. So that's the date instance without argument. I do any argument here, it's just an empty block here, right? Uh, returns a new data object. Uh, which is the current date and time. It looks like a string, but it's actually an object here. All right, so let's see. So I can uh, try some of the instance method here. So we have now, uh, let's get, you see, you see all those things, so I don't have to remember. That's great. <laughs> so get <laughs> time, yeah. And uh, yeah, I get the timestamp again. Of course, it's not the same as the, the one I did before because, uh, you know, Time has passed, and this is actually get time from this now here. Or maybe we can try something like uh, now get um, date. Why, why not? 
It's six. What is that? It's six. It's October the sixth today, right? So it's just a six today's date. But when you try instead of date, day, that's a day of the week. And a week begins uh you know from Sunday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Today's Wednesday, right? Because it's a web Wednesday. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, it's a three. So why three, not four? Because it's zero based. All so, counting should be zero based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of confusing things. So, and we can try uh, get uh, UTC day instead of today's day. Look at the same. So the difference between a get day and UTC day is the one is my local time, and this one is actually using UTC time. Um, you know what? Let me check. I'm gonna see what is UTC time now is. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. It's all two. 2222. <laughs> but that means if I call this uh, the method like hour and a half from now, uh, it's going to show four because it's already next day, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, I'm showing only the get methods here, but there are set methods and stuff that you can set a specific date as you need for your, you know, when you're writing app applications and stuff. Okay. And uh, yeah, and they are also a string method. So let's say now and two string, uh, uh, two string. So that gives us a slightly uh, friendlier format. Actually, just all spelled out today. So Wednesday, October six, blah 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 blah, and uh, the current time. But it's in like all in my local machine, the local time. Right. And mm -hmm. also in your local setting, so it's giving you that U.S. standard yeah, of, of month, day, year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not actual local date and stuff. It's really about the browser setting because it's all written from the browser. So, right. Yeah. Right. So let's say again, then now maybe to how about yeah date string here. And again, just only the date part: Wednesday, October six, in twenty um, twenty one. And then no time, and we can get uh, mm -mm, date ISO string. Now I get a slightly less friendly uh, the string here. I say just year 2021 10 6 T, so it's a time. So that's a standard format. So ISO, it's uh, international standard, but it's all open. I guess. I think it's organization. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm so terrible at, at, at abbreviations. Yeah, I, I should have looked it up. But yeah, so basically, this is an uh, international standard. So, you know, that's the way Americans don't say, you know, it's year first in four days, YYYY dash, and it's a month. So, MM dash DD and T time in hour, a minute, and a millisecond, a millisecond. It's always end with Z for some reasons. So that's the ISO string. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, and uh, there are also a static method to parse that string as well. And so to a number in a millisecond, I'm gonna just show you. So let me see, so that's a static method. So date, parse, okay. And let's just copy paste this. Yeah, and that should give us a millisecond at that time in a moment. Um, so that's whatever that is. And uh, again, uh, you know, the millisecond time since January 1st, 1970. Actually, and uh, if you don't care about all you know, the time and stuff, you can just get the date and that works too. So by default, that's a uh, when the day starts, it's midnight, like, you know, zero o'clock, zero minutes, zero seconds, or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, I find a, a different type of strings actually kind of work. Ooh, oh, my keyboard has some issues. It's six. So I had to press really hard. <laughs> and I got the, yeah, the, you know, the same, return the same number. And also, let's say 10, 
I had to press hard sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that works too, but that's American, like US format, right? So right. that seems right. So if you flip here, like may, try to make it more like an UK way, it obviously doesn't because that's a June 10th for us, but that right. doesn't sound right. I mean, so, you know, it's JavaScript. You don't just trust whatever I say. I mean, or maybe it's not about JavaScript to you. Uh. Well, actually, this is just not right, you know? So the best practice here is, uh, you know, always stick with ISO time format okay. here, a little parsing. Yeah. yeah. Actually, one real quick question. I, I think this is a good time to, to sneak this in. And I'm going to kind of expand this out a little bit. Um, is Raven Web Development asks, can we use this on CRM applications? And I'm going to guess that the sort of like the higher level question is, is um, does does all of this state functionality that you're showing, does this work on like Node or on other engines that can run ECMAScript? OK, some does. Well, in the node, if you were just trying, you, you should just try in a terminal. Some works, but many don't. So, OK. okay. Yeah, because it's especially when I'm talking about internationalization format and all those things later, it really matters that the browser vendors have to implement everything. Because I'm going to show you something a little more specific or more like special cases later, which you can just make it work. In every, you know any uh, environment, but the basic thing is should work as long as you know the server has the correct you know data. But obviously, um, that's not about looking at your local setting in the browser side. So it, it works differently, you know. So if you try those functions here, you probably won't see the same result as in a browser because the settings are different. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so anyways, so use a ESO format here and uh, you can okay, that's not a number. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the uh, okay, two string method because I'm gonna go into the more like international things here. So let's see, go back. Da -da -da. ASO I always appreciate developer sound effects. <laughs> I do the exact same thing when I'm when I'm developing. Just like, I have to make sound effects when I'm when I'm writing code. I didn't even think about it. Oh, <laughs> so I didn't mean to embarrass you. I apologize. <laughs> I do the I exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, and I probably would do it again without that. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so that's a two string. So you saw that earlier, and uh, you can try the two locale string. Yeah, get yeah, something a little bit different. So, you got, hmm. uh, so by default, like I didn't give any argument here. It's empty here, yeah, right? No argument. So that's actually my local. Uh, so which is actually set um, English in the US. So that's my local here. So you get the same result. The thing is that you see a month, first month, day, year. But so you can actually, I'm going to show this uh, British English version. Now you, you see the difference here. Now the day first, month, and a year. And the times is slightly different because it doesn't say PM. So it's kind of hard. I wish I could show this later so you, have, you, know, you see the clearer difference. So basically, this is a mili um, well, I was going to say military time, but I think military time is a American way of saying. So it's 24 hour clock. Right. So in the US, we got AM and PM, morning and afternoon. But here we're using a 24 hour clock. So if you see this later in one o'clock, uh, you see 13 here instead of one. So that's different. So let's say I'm going to try, let's do in Japan. So it's a Japanese in Japan. So in Japan, it looks like you know, it's a year first. It's closer to like ISO string here. I mean, yeah, ISO date. So year, month, day, and it also is in 24 o'clock. And I'm going to try something slightly more interesting. Korean in uh, South Korea. I can't read this, but I'm guessing that means like AM, PM. So this one's kind of like a PM in Korean. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm not going to 
tell you about something I don't even know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the things get a little more interesting. So, yeah. Okay. So now, it, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually like convert the time. So it's not like telling you this is the time in the UK or this is the time in Japan. Oh, no. It's just yeah. it's just putting the string into the appropriate format. It's Correct. not doing anything fancier like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then yeah, you have to really tweak and everything. So you have to write a whole app. Like I was actually using that every time zone. It's a wonderful <laughs> web app I'm always using, and uh, you know it converts that for you. But JavaScript doesn't convert. You know, give you a so yeah. So let's say oh, so here's a locale. Uh, we have like language and the country actually i'm going to show you something so you can tell what locale your current setting is as a navigator and language so that be the only property in the browser so that's your browser setting so english in the us but you can change this so i'm actually going to do this setting this is a browser so i'm using edge so this is an edge setting page, you have a profile and blah, blah, you have a language setting here. So I have Japanese as a second option here, but I can just move up to the top and make it default. So now it's, you see Japanese on top. So when I call the same one, now you see JA. Uh, and it's just only in language and doesn't mention about country here in this case, but maybe because the browser said, and this is just generic Japanese, and we got English in US and gener generic English here. I'm, I say generic, I'm not exactly sure, but that's that sense, right? it's just a, yeah, the setting. So I, I just switched back. I think I did. Yeah. And you can also see all the settings, languages and the plural. So I get American English, Japanese and English, like I just showed you right here. Again, this is all about your setting. And if you run in the same code in somebody else's browser, of course, it reads that person's browser setting, obviously. And uh, yeah, so it's language. I say it's language first and a country. So actually, I was trying to show this page here. So there are so many uh, language code here. So if you take a look at like even English, there's so many different kind of English here. So. So it has all the information here. Okay, cool. There is one other question I want to bubble up here, and it, it goes back to parse. Is if um, is it possible to like pass another parameter or something like that into parse so that if you know that you have like a predefined that it's always going to come in as day, month, year to oh, tell parse, hey, this is the way it's going to come in. So. That's something, that's why I have this uh, Mozilla developer, you know, yeah. the <laughs> you can always take a look at. So the parse, oh, maybe this, I don't know if this. Page We're doing real bad. development here. Oh, it's actually, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to look out at state parse. Let me see, I'm gonna just open up in a different tab. It's cool. It always you can try it here too. Ooh, parameters, date, student. Nope. Okay. I was kind of surprised. I thought the answer was yes because I feel like it, but nope. Okay, that's interesting. Huh? Yeah. See, too. I'm not an expert. I always have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. And it gets it gets so confusing so fast sometimes with uh, with dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is always. So yeah, okay, let me see the, okay, we are my locale. So I was showing locales and, oh yeah. So let's get back to where we are. So yeah, so when talking about like two local, locales, not local, locale string. We get the string and this uh, specified locale. So yeah. All right, so maybe I'm gonna just switch the subject a little bit before going into the Intel object. Sure. 
Uh huh. Because uh, like again, I was born and raised in Japan, and uh, okay, hold on, see, kind of adjusting the browser windows right here. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, I was born and raised in Japan, so I see the, all the differences and stuff. And the people often surprised when I tell people about we use a different calendar. Yeah, and especially you know if you're in the U.S. and uh, the Gregorian calendar system is the only the calendar you use, it's sometimes kind of difficult to see what other calendars you know. So <laughs> now I'm gonna be all just talking about Wikipedia things here. So yeah, so that's a Gregorian calendar, uh, but believe it or not, of course, there are so many other calendars. Take a look at this uh, right hand side here. There's so many other calendars, you know, used in the world. Yeah, of course, and you know, I don't know those. And uh, just the one of them is calendar here. Had some, something really cool from uh, 1729. So, yeah, so Japan is a really uh, like interesting, quite unique place in many ways, and, and uh, we sometimes even use lunar calendar too, although it's not really common uh, because of some traditional maybe ceremony or something, you know. But uh, yeah, but so maybe mm, maybe we're losing people who are rely on lunar calendars. But like for me, like my grandparents, my well. Yeah, uh, but we stopped, I mean, we means Japan stopped using the lunar calendar around like 150 years ago when they adapted Gregor Gregorian calendar during the nation's so-called modernization time. So actually we do, I mean, people in Japan do use Gregorian calendar as well. So this year is a 2021 um, BC. So that, you know, not VC, I meant AT. So that's yeah. what, it, yeah. I tried to say it's like, yeah, the Christian calendar or whatever. But yeah, it's that too, you know. So uh, today is like, again, October 6th. In my time zone, maybe your time zone might be changing soon. But uh, so it's October 6th, 2021. But it is actually called Reiwa in Japanese calendar right now. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, like again, Japan uses uh, Gregorian calendar and their own calendar, Japanese calendar as well, and which is which is really um, based on uh, emperor. So, the basic what is Reiwa is I have another Wikipedia page right here. It's Reiwa. So the the guy in the picture, I shouldn't say just a guy. It's an emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not just a <the> guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not just a guy. So Reiwa is a current imperial year. And that begins in uh, 2019 after the previous emperor, Naruhito, ascended his throne. And his son, Akihito, became a new emperor of Japan when he abdicted a chrysanthemum throne. There's so many words that I never use in my real life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> ascended the throne and abdicted. Uh, abdicated, I said no wrong. Abdicated. abdicated. That's okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> abdicated. See, yeah, that kind of special words only used for certain special people. So yeah, so Japan has really a, a long history of imperial dynasty. Um, so uh, the emperor, so that's a funny story. Uh, emperor Jimmu was the first emperor and that was in the year uh, 660 BC. That's really a BC, like long before Christ. And, uh, but the, the funny story is, we don't really know if the emperor Jemu really existed. Or maybe the record is exaggerated because apparently um, he was a descendant of the sun goddess. So it's really, like mythology, it's kind of okay. like a Greek mythological, yeah, gods and legend. So, but but still, it's controversial if I say uh, maybe he didn't exist. It, you know, you know. So, but that's really a part of the official Japanese history. And uh, anyway, so the emperor, uh, the current emperor is, I think it's a uh, one six. No, not one. It's one twenty six. 
Yeah, looks like it. Yeah. And okay. this is the year of uh, Reiwa. So Reiwa is not his name. And it usually uh, it gives the name of the year. Um, okay, hold on a second. So, oh, yeah, this guy here. So he's holding this, uh, you know, Japanese calligraphy that say Reiwa. And uh, the, usually uh, the error name is not the emperor's name. And that, there's a, some committee, and that they picked the name from some old uh, poetry and literature, some really old literature, like I mean, like thousands year, thousand years old. So that's like a very historic thing. And apparently, Reba means beautiful harmony. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that's a history about. So now you know about the little bit about Japanese calendar. What that what that means. And uh, just we have an imperial year, and it's a Reva three is this year and 2021, the same thing. But it's not a lunar calendar. It still goes just like a Gregor uh, Gregorian calendar. So today it's still October 6. So that we, we can take hmm. a look at in a JavaScript. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Code can tell ya. Okay. So so let's get back to so that's a local string here. So yeah, just to and tell, told you about the you know two local string earlier. So this is something that has been redefined in the ECMAScript International API. So the other one that we tried to talk about Intel. And in this case, uh yeah, I'm just too lazy. I'm gonna type this a daytime <laughs> format. Yeah. So it's a pretty much rewritten, still in you know, both works. Yeah, so that this is actually a constructor, you know, that creates an object that uh, you know enable the language specific date and time format. So let's try this. So this actually um, needs some arguments here. So let's say so English, like U.S. English, and the format. Yeah, so we have this now here. Oh, so I'm gonna just use that. And that's what I get. So it's just a simple today's date in a US format. So it's month first, right? Again, it's October 6th, 2021. And uh, it's just a date. So this only gives you a date, but it actually takes options. So here, the arguments takes the options. So you have to really specify what you want. Oops. So if you want to have nice, you know, date, date and time, date, I think it's date style. I'm going to just try long and the same thing for um, time style and it takes string here. I think that. So now I get a uh, date format in long format, October. It's spelled out October 6th, blah, blah, and a time. And uh, actual options, we have short, long, medium, and full. Yeah, so we can just try and see something else. Let's say maybe medium and short. How about that? So yeah, it, it looks a little bit different, but it's still the same thing. Uh, we can actually, I say same thing, not same thing. It's format and a different, um, you know, descript, description, not description. So good. Yeah, so when you have full here, so it gets even date, like what's the October 6th, blah, 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 and it even has a time zone. It's actually uh, really depends on how browser implements. So if you try the same thing on browsers like Firefox and Safari, you might get a slightly different string. Because on Edge, it's a Hawaiian illusion standard time, because I'm in Hawaii. Uh, but uh, on other browsers, I notice it just say uh, HSD. Or maybe not that one. Actually, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, which browser and how it's implemented. But I'm just saying, it might not be always the same. Right. Mm. The parameters, though, are, are, are pretty straightforward. Like, I kind of like that date style and then that time style and just, like, being a little bit more uh, 
you know, it, it just being a little bit more generic that one of the mm -hmm. things I really don't like is ever having to try to remember like what all of the, the yeah. little like date format strings are. Like when, when you look at, um, and I'm not here to pick on, on .NET, it's just the first one that came to mind, but it, you know, like small D versus big D and, and you know, it, <laughs> it means different things and it gets, it gets kind of confusing. So I, I like that just sort of more generic of, hey, do you want a long one? Do you want a short one? Um, and doing it that way. So I, I really like that. So that's a both way. So yeah, when you try the inspector, you can actually cheat all those things here too. <laughs> actually, these are the what I've tried before, but anyway, so, okay, hold on. Yeah, okay, let's try something else. Cause I was talking about like AD and BC and stuff a little bit uh, earlier. So we can actually try printing error as well but actually when i try to run this get error because apparently we can't really combine error with time style and date style Ooh. for some reasons yeah so yeah oh that's actually interesting because let's say error when you see short and you get, yes, uh, 10, 6, 20, 21 AD. That's something we're familiar with. But actually, I tried the long one first. But yeah, I honestly didn't know the AD, which, you know, AD stands for Anno Domini. <laughs> Did you know this? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't. Somebody in, in the chat had actually mentioned that uh, earlier um, yeah. over, on, uh, oh, yeah. over on Twitch. Uh -huh. Yeah. I saw it. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I know I've heard it before, but it's one of those things that, you know, you just, it's AD, you just sort of take that for, for, for granted. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's weird, because BC is before Christ, it's in English. Right. And right. I assume it, AD was something like in English too. Anyways, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's after debugging. Cold yeah. with John, that's yeah. right. <laughs> All right, so, okay, now um, let's try something else. So this is interesting stuff. So I'm gonna get back to, forget about error for now. I am gonna do date style here. And I'm gonna try calendar because that, that's what I really wanted to get, correct calendar. So we can, um, let me see, I can even take a look at here. So it's in the Mozilla, again, MDN, until date time format, constructor, blah, blah. So you can see all the you know arguments and options here that you can use. So calendar is a one of those here. I wanna kind of show you. And if I use the calendar uh, Buddhist, you get something really interesting here. So apparently in a Buddhist year, uh, this, uh, this year is not 2021, but it, 2,564 BE. I don't know what a BE stands for, but that's what it is in Buddhist year. And we can even try, let's try Indian. That's even more interesting because hmm. it looks like it is all different. I think it's Aspen. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Well, let's see. So today's topic. So let's try in calendar. What do we get? So yeah, we get uh, today's date. Like again, the calendar itself is the same, but the year only year is imperial, so it's three rewa. So that's cool. But you know what? Well, it's fine. It's cool and stuff. But I kind of want this printed in Japanese in a correct way. And uh, what do I need to do here? So again, if you take a look at the first argument here, is a locale. So now I have to actually um, use a correct locale. So it's a Japanese. And in Japan, JP. I'm actually using uppercase here, but I think it's case insensitive. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just doing the right way. So let's see what we get. Ah, yeah, cool. So that's today's date in Japanese, in Japanese Imperial here. Yeah. So that I can read because, well, I read Japanese. So <laughs> <laughs> that says, Leiwa san nen, jugas muika seiyobi, junichi nijupen, zero zero bio, Hawaii, a Yushin, Hyojunji. So that's what I say. Yeah. So 
Yeah, that's gets quite interesting. Of course, you know, not not just Japanese. You can try, let's say, Chinese. Uh, it's a C C H and C N. So Chinese in oh, not C N is a mainland China. And let's try Chinese calendar here. Ah, cool, something you know. I don't know what it says. I can't read it, but that's something pretty cool. And we can also try something even more interesting for me is uh, yeah the, the, the Chinese. It still because it still has it still has the um, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's it, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I think yeah. I think it's a yeah, lunar cause, cause calendar. It, yeah, cause it, yeah, because it, it's got the ninth month, so it's got to be the lunar calendar there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You you yeah. notice this? It yeah. it's ninth yeah. month, and uh, I think that means birthday. I'm not exactly sure, but yes, if you read Chinese, you can tell this is not ten six like October six. So it's actually because here I specify the Chinese calendar. Of course, you know, if I use, let's say, the same thing, uh, oh, okay, I'm gonna just do it. So even if using the Chinese locale, but using, let's say, yeah, why not, Japanese calendar here, then this should say uh, in today's date. Oh, oh yeah, because it's a Japanese, using Japanese calendars, so it's a ray bar, three, right. and 10, six, but in Chinese, so, yeah, that's an interesting fact. So of course you can mix and match and all that thing. So it, it's pretty cool. So yeah, so that was really about my topic. But let me little talk a little bit about something else because uh, you know this is like a vanilla JavaScript, and many of you might not like to. Well, I wouldn't say might not like it, but it's just prefer using like frameworks like React and. Uh, so in case you are interested or you're curious, there's something called React Intel that takes care of the date. It's pretty much like I believe having the wrapper functions and everything for that. And that's based on this format JS. And I think format JS let you um, you know try like testing by yourself here. But I actually already tested earlier. Let me see. I don't know where I did. I can just try whatever. Format day. Okay, hold on. I can just quickly do that again. I think we ran out of time, but no, we still got we still got about five minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. We can just use a one of live editor. I don't know if that works. So apparently that's how you do with the format JS. Okay. So you get yeah, Intel provider locale, you set locale and a format date, and then you have all the options here, and you get the result like Rayba 3, 10, 6 in Japanese calendar. Yeah, something like this. So I don't know too much about, I mean, a lot of detail in this format JS, but I mean, you know, I'm just giving you as an option because you don't always use vanilla JavaScript. So right. Yeah, and uh, like again, I was mentioning earlier that it's really when you use using these, you know, Intel functions, it really depends on a browsers and the browser vendors have to implement them manually, you know. So initially, you know, when the you know, Rayvar year started, like uh, three years ago, I was curious. So I kind of went in a testing and see if the browser vendors have implemented Rayvar. And of course, it wasn't actually. So I created this. Uh, uh, is it Rayva yet? Now we say yes because, of course, it's been three years. They already have implemented. But initially, yeah, I also the wrong year, and it took. I saw them. You know, it took a few months. And when I created this and tweeted, of course, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was my intention. Actually, it reached the right people in the right browser company and vendors. So that was great. So now it's all implemented. And on this web page, I'm actually using a little bit of different format here. This is actually a shortcut or what I was talking about earlier. You know, I was showing, I was using options. Let's get back, you know, all those options here, right? Date style, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's actually a shortcut for this too. 
So you have a regular locale, and uh, I think that means extension or something. So it's extended locale, and CA means calendar, and in Japanese means a uh, long, I mean, a Jap uh, means Japanese calendar, I said, and it comes with error. So yeah, so that's another way you can do. So it's not always super verbose. There is a shortcut as well. Yeah, and uh, oh yeah, one more thing. I actually wrote the blog about this on my website. It's girlymac.com. So I wrote this when Rayba just started. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually, I think I got all. Oh, yeah. That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's really perfect and it. pretty much spot on timing wise. That was that was really interesting. That Thank was you. really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, initially I was worried if I had enough content, but it turns out I spent <laughs> all the time frame. So I feel like it didn't give you time for questions and stuff. But, no, yeah. that's fine. We we actually we worked in all of the all of the questions. So yeah, so that was that was really interesting. Yeah. Thanks for you know kind of showing us how calendars work and how JavaScript works and um, you know how to get a little bit better at uh, making sure that that the apps that we create are you know properly <laughs> internationalized. And so. there's some Japanese history too. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't really tell you about. All I told you was like, yeah, it might be podcast, but no. Sh <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to get you back sometime to to talk about all of your tech drawings because I know that uh, that that you do that oh, yeah. uh, uh, an awful lot. So definitely want to talk about that. But uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for 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 coming on, Tomomi. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and uh, tech doodles. Yeah, you can actually view that on my Twitter and my web page too. <laughs> Perfect. I think it's right here. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> right there. Right there. And uh, yeah. So I'm and I'm Christopher. This is Web Wednesday. Thank you to everybody for for tuning in. And uh, we're back again next week. I can never remember whatever the topic is for the following week, so I can never tease it properly. But come back next week. It'll be a surprise for everybody. So thanks for tuning in. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>